morning, folks. Here today we have very special guests who served his country proud in World War II. From Mussolini's fascism party, to Stalin who replaced Vladimir Lenin, to Hitler's Nazi Germany, we have a very special guest here today, and his name is Richard Cross. Richard? You've come a long way, my friend. It must have been hell out there. <laughs> hell isn't a word to describe what we went through. Of course, it's sad times. Now, let us start from the very beginning. You want to hear the beginning? Storm began brewing up as early as 1919 with the formation of the fascist party. These, these believers in dictatorship opposed the rise in communism in Russia, where in 1926, Stalin arrived, slaying all those who opposed his rising wrath. Then it's a Hitler hit with his political ideas because of the German economy. The Nazi Socialist Party rose up and supported Hitler's nationalism. If Führer began acting on reconstruction of the military, or violated the Treaty of Versailles. I don't mean that, old Mr. Cross. I don't want the people out here and the kids watching at home be getting no history lesson. On the other side, Pan invaded Manchuria to gain the resource-rich province. Their own prime minister tried to make negotiations, but he was assassinated. I hear this. The whole time, America is trying to keep out with this whole Neutrality Act of 1938. But that doesn't stop Hitler and Stalin from forming the Home Berlin, Rome Berlin axes. Things only got, things only got worse from there. Harsh things, though. Really. How are things all over at Europe? The Angelus unification of Austria and Germany happened. So there was this Munich conference in which Berlin and France gave, gave in to Hitler's demands. And the appeasement? Yes. Chamberlain decided it would help keep Hitler at bay by giving him Czechoslovakia. We couldn't have been more wrong. Peace in our time. That's when Hitler set aside on Poland. September 1st, 1939. Hitler invaded Poland. That's what got us with his new tactic, the Blitzkrieg Warsaw, capital of Poland, fell on September 27th. Then he attempted to reach out for France, where the Maginot Line stayed, but Hitler wasn't dumb. He went through Belgium to reach France. And I'm assuming that's where you guys came in. Operation Dynamo. It was called the evacuation of over 300,000 troops. Damn miracle. Hitler was driving us towards the English Channel. We ordered back. We were ordered to retreat. We brought most of our equipment and we were trying to get out of that damn evacuation site. How many were with you? The war brought us down a whole lot. We were lost. One could say we were. we were forgotten.
Start that day. I made it to the Dunkirk beach on June 2nd. You should have seen their faces. The only man from a platoon, you could say, someone was looking out for me. Hitler actually gave a three day delay by holding off the troops. Obviously, I can't thank Hitler for anything. But, but you made it out, and that's what matters. No. No, I should have died that day. It's the 22nd of June when the French surrendered. What was it like coming back home? Some said I was a hero. There's no time for celebrations. The Luftwaffe, the German Air Force, and Hitler attacked Britain. Churchill brought the spirit back. Peace was never the option, he said, and so we fought back. All of our air battle and with the development of the radar, the Nazis didn't see what was going to hit them. And on October 12th, 1940, Hitler canceled the invasion. We all rejoiced. And now. Well, that concludes our heroic story. And we're glad we had the honor to interview Sir Richard Cross, the sole survivor of the Lost Platoon. Thank you very much. And good night, everybody.